Hey y'all, today I'm gonna be showing you how 3D printed this for the wall right there using Canva and Fusion 360. Let's get started. So after going through a couple different versions of my YouTube play button sign, I was able to come up with five different design tips for making your own 3D printed backlit sign. So tip number one is to determine the shape and size of your sign. As far as the size goes, this is limited by two factors. One is the size of your wall. Obviously, if you can't do a sign that's bigger than your wall or bigger than the space you have on your wall. And then two is the size of your print bed. And generally speaking, for this tutorial, I would pick a size that will fit on one print bed. So you don't want to have to split this into two pieces. So what I would do would be to just make a generic shape, uh, whatever shape you choose. You know, you can do a circle, you can do a rectangle, a square, a hexagon. So now I have Fusion 360 open. I'm just going to make a test file here. I'm just going to call it test size and then the first step always is to create a new component and I'm going to name this just test size as the name of the component and I'll just jump in here and then create whatever shape I decided on and as I mentioned I'm going to do a hexagon just because this is a 3D printing channel and hexagon is kind of the shape of 3D printing and you want to pick the longest distance. So for instance, with the hexagon, it would be uh, from here to here, since that's kind of the limiting constraint on size uh, of your, really we're doing the border, but generally speaking, the size of the sign. So I know that around 240 is about the size that I can fit on a Prusa or a Bamboo Lab printer, which are the two printers that I have. You can look up your uh, printer bed size and kind of go by that, but this is just, as an example and you can see here now i'm just going to extrude something i don't really care what the size of it is so now we have just a rough shape of our sign just kind of the profile of it now we're going to go to 3d print select the body and then send it over to prusa slicer and then here is my prusa slicer window and you can see here once i lay it down that it's really close to fitting. And the Bamboo Lab is actually has a little bit bigger print bed, so it fits a little bit better, but this is just a way to see, okay, if I try to slice this, it says it's outside of the path. So I would probably try a little bit smaller size. So let's go jump back over here. Let's go in here and change it to slightly smaller. Let's try 230. And then let's export this one over to Prusa Slicer. And now you can see that if we use this one, it will probably fit. Go and delete the bigger one. Now you see we don't get an error, so this should work just fine. And this isn't the sign, this is just a kind of test to make sure that we don't waste time doing something that we'll have to change later because of the print bed size. So. That's uh, one tip. And then just another kind of bonus tip while we're on the topic of sizing and shape of your sign, you can use just a plain sheet of paper and basically draw a shape out with it and then tape it onto the wall just temporarily to see if your size is roughly uh, what you think it should be. And it's just a good visual representation. It might save you time on the back end just to make sure that you're doing it a size that you think is going to look good uh, with the final product. And you can also, if you're using it for YouTube, kind of frame your, your shot that way as well so you only have to hang it once. So. That's another tip that I just wanted to mention when we're talking about size and shape of signs. So tip number two is selecting an LED light. And for that, I would recommend going to Amazon and typing in Cobb LED light strip. And the one that I use actually is a USB. You'll see if you just type in Cobb LED light strip, most of these are going to have the traditional wall plug-in. And that'll work fine, but my concern with that is it will probably get pretty hot. So if you're trying to use PLA, it's probably not the best idea. So I would probably go for just the USB, which is the five volt. So you can also just type in Cobb LED light strip, USB five volt, and that'll give you a little more uh, options as far as the five volt version. And, and these options are pretty bright uh, in my opinion. And you can see here, there's one for 9.99, looks like a pretty good option. And it has a remote control on it. You can also dim it down. So that's something that 
feel like is a good feature is to be able to dim it. Uh, the one I have is just a light switch and I'll, I'll link something similar down below. And obviously if you want RGB, you can pick from that. But the cob lights are a little bit higher quality. It's just the density of the lights themselves, just a traditional LED light. Sometimes you can see the individual lights and most of the time with the cob light, it looks like a single continuous strand of light. So it looks a little bit better. So that's what I would recommend as far as the actual light itself. The length is anything over three or four feet should be plenty long. But again, that kind of depends on the size of your sign. And then for actually designing the uh, fusion file for the light, I'll jump over to fusion now and kind of show you my best practices for that. So now I'm back in fusion 360 and this is the file that I created. And you can see here on the back, a couple of things about how I integrated the light. So the first thing is I made this little trench cut out and that's really the width of the light. And most are about a centimeter wide. So this is a centimeter deep. And in total, this total distance uh, from this, uh, the front face to the back face is 20 millimeters, as you can see down there. So that is the size that I would make this outer perimeter. And then as far as the width of the uh, outer perimeter, I made it 10 millimeters, as you can see here. And as far as this trench goes to put the light in, I'll mention a couple of things. One is I made it three millimeters from there to there. And the way that I did that is using something called an offset. And I think that that's pretty important to mention. So go in and find that real quickly. And the way I use the offset was I just offset this inside border. So if you click up here to offset and select the inside border, it basically just lets you expand and draw another line at whatever thickness you want away from that inside perimeter. And that's really useful so you don't have to redraw the hexagons each time. And what I did was made two offsets, one at three millimeters and one at six millimeters. So the difference is uh, three millimeters because six minus three is three. And that gives us a three millimeter trench as I like to call it around uh, the border there. So another thing that's important about this body is I added these holes around the uh, trench as I like to call it. And the reason for that is I wanted the light to pass. You have to imagine the light strip being in here to pass from inside here to behind the sign because we want it to be lit up. So I thought that that would help if I had some holes in it. The way that I did that was I just made it an extrusion here. You can see here that it was in the plane and then all the way through the wall and the reason that I had to go a little extra distance was because since this is in a circle, you'll have, uh, when you pattern it in a circle, it won't reach the wall here. So I just go ahead and go all the way through everything. And then I pattern it in a circle here, as you can see with that. And then I come back and extrude just the wall, as you can see here. So I just went back and re-extruded that and that kind of eliminated those holes that I made. So you're kind of undoing something that you do and that's not generally good practice in CAD, but I felt like that was the best way to do it. And then another thing that I wanted to mention here is you also need to have a little outlet for the light so that you can basically uh, thread the light in and then have a way for the cable to exit everything and remain flush with the wall. So don't forget to add that. And then I also added some fillets here, which were fairly straightforward. And that was just so that the light wouldn't get cut and it'd be a little bit easier to wrap around uh, this outer perimeter with the fillets rather than just sharp points. So that is the big things about the lighting setup. And if you're concerned about the temperature of the light, I would consider using a higher temperature plastic, uh, such as PTG, ASA, uh, the carbon fiber stuff is pretty high temperature, nylon. Those are a little more exotic, but I think PTG definitely has a little bit higher melting temperature than, that's one thing to consider. But again, that's why I suggested a five volt light, which it puts off a little bit less heat, generally speaking. So tip number three is adding the design file from Canva and importing it into Fusion 360. So I'm just gonna do this as an example and just start a new file here, just to give you a clear understanding of what's going on and uh, just gonna make a generic 
saws fall here. Just pretend this is your sawn. And then I'm going to bring Canva over. So here's Canva and we're just gonna make a new file and wanna do custom size. This is Canva Pro, so if you don't have Canva Pro, I don't know if you have all the same features, but generally speaking, this is the process you wanna go through. You wanna change your pixel to millimeters, and then our height, we're just gonna do 100 by 100, and this really doesn't matter. You can always scale it in Fusion 360 later, so uh, don't spend a lot of time thinking about what size you want. I would just make it 100 by 100, and then make a new design. And then here we're gonna click on elements. And then I'm just gonna do the YouTube one because that's what I did last time, but you can look for whatever you want. And then the one that I used was this one. So it's actually is a pro file, but hopefully some of the other ones will be available to you if you, if you don't use the pro version. And then I uh, go ahead and center everything. And then I don't make it all the way the full size of the design file because I feel like that causes issues with exporting. So I make it pretty close though. So something about like that, make sure it's centered. And then we wanna click share, download. And then here we're gonna change the file type to SVG just cause that imports into Fusion 360 the best. And then we're gonna click download. And then I'm just gonna call it test example SVG. And then we're gonna go back over to Fusion 360. And then we're gonna click insert, insert SVG. And then we're gonna go find that on our computer. For me, it's in the downloads folder. And then you select what plane you want to put the SVG in, and it's just going to be the same plane as before. And you'll see that when it imports, it doesn't exactly import perfectly. I'm not really exactly sure why this happens, but generally speaking, you can rearrange everything. And what's also a little frustrating to me is that it doesn't even find the center. So we made this 100 by 100, but if you come down 50, which is right there, then it's not centered vertically. So what I generally do is I just take the handle and kind of try to place it in the center where I want it anyway. And you can also resize it at this point as well, uh, just by using this handle. So that's why I said it doesn't really matter if you pick 100 by 100 in Canva or not. You can also scale it here. So if you want to make it double, you just click uh, two and then that makes it bigger. And so I'm going to make it smaller again, so it'll fit on my 100 by 150 sign. And then I'm just going to find the best position for it. And that's why I like to use center rectangles and stuff around the origin, because you still have these lines you can kind of position you in the right place. So that looks about right to me. And you can see here, it also didn't import exactly right, because there's this double line at the top, but uh, if you just base it on this, this looks about right. So I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to be nice and green and finish sketch. So now we can go ahead and just extrude everything around it. Make this 20, actually make this one 10. And then this is actually a pretty important step is to be able to offset this slightly. So I made another sketch and I'm gonna do offset, click on the border. And then to be able to fit this in uh, to this uh, slot essentially is you wanna add a little bit of clearance. So I usually do negative 0.1 and you'll see that there's a little bitty gap there. And that's important because your 3D printer has uh, some variance in how it prints and dimensional accuracy. So this is just to compensate for that. So I'm gonna do that on that side. And then also, I'm also gonna add a small uh, amount of distance here as well. So to do that, I'm gonna do project with the P command. You can also find it here, I'll project, I'll click project. I'm gonna project that triangle or whatever is the inside shape and click offset and then add 0.1 again of clearance. 
So now I can extrude this shape out and it's a new body like we want. So I'm gonna click okay. And now change the color real quick. Make this one white or whatever color variation you want. So there's that. And this was just an example of how to import the SVG file. And so now back to my design, uh, I did pretty much the same thing, but one thing to remember is your border needs to be about double the size of your insert. And my insert was uh, one centimeter thick. As you can see here, if I hide that, it was nine, but I have a one millimeter chamfer. So if I click here, and then click here, it's 10 millimeters, as you can see down here in the corner. So that is how I made that. And just remember a big takeaway from here after you import and get it set up, remember to do the project and then the offset so that it'll fit in there because you can be pretty frustrated by that. And another big tip uh, while we're here is to add a chamfer around the edge. And what that does is it prevents elephant's foot so basically, since we're going to be placing this face down so that it'll print well, uh, sometimes the first layer sticks out a little bit and that prevents the parts from fitting together properly. And one other bonus tip that I wanted to mention was how I made this cable uh, protector thing. And the reason I made that was just to try to make everything a little bit cleaner looking. And you can see on the back that it's a little more complicated than you might think, but essentially the idea is I was able to insert this into that uh, small little gap that I made in the bottom. The way that that works is you basically just press it in and since it's already hanging, it should just kind of hang freely down the wall. And you can see that I just made a little cutout uh, about three millimeters as well so that the wire could just run straight down. And it worked out pretty well. I thought that it was a little bit cleaner than just having the wire kind of dangle down. I think that this kind of makes it a little less distracting because uh, it also blends in with the white wall and I feel like it overall was a good idea to try to incorporate that in to the design. But again, that's not necessary. You don't really have to have that. And if you don't have that, you could always make your gap here a little bit smaller, but I made it uh, about 20 millimeters wide here just so that I could in integrate this a little bit easier. Tip number four is slicing the sign with a grid pattern. So now that we have the sign uh, completed how we want it, we're going to export this part, which is the part that we're going to add a grid pattern to so that we get that nice uh, backlit effect. So we're going to go ahead and click 3D print, select this, click OK, and mine exports into Prusa Slicer, which you'll see here. And now that we have Prusa Slicer pulled up, I'm gonna go ahead and make it full screen for you. Now uh, we're gonna put it face down. So I would recommend as much as you can putting things face down because that's gonna give it a nice textured finish, which is uh, makes it look a lot better. So, so we just click slice you'll see that it's just a normal part, which you can do that, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having this backlit uh, version of a sign. So we go into print settings, we go to infill, and then we change uh, the fill pattern to hexagon or honeycomb. And then we go to layers and perimeters and we change the solid layers to zero on the top and zero on the bottom. And then we click slice again. And now you see we have this nice honeycomb pattern. And you can also change the density of the infill just by changing the infill percentage here. So if we go up to like 40%, you'll see that the infill is a lot denser. So that's really just personal preference. I left mine at 15%, but you can do really whatever you want with this. And generally it prints fairly easily. So that is the way you slice everything to make it look the way I did. Tip number five, hanging the sign. So there's a lot of different ways that you could hang the sign up. Uh, what I did was I just made another component, a small 3D printed component. And back here, just go ahead and make it for you real quick. 
you can really make it wherever you want because it's not going to be attached. But I made it about 60 wide, roughly, and then about 30 uh, in this direction, and then extruded it essentially the whole width minus about one, just because I knew that there would be a uh, piece of tape back here. And that's what I used was just some tape. And then uh, to make sure that the light could pass through so there wouldn't be a darker spot here, I went ahead and made a shell out of this. So you select there. And then if I hide these other ones there, you can see that I made a little basically a little uh, rectangle without a top and bottom. And so the way that that works is I just tape this on the wall and then just put the sign on top of that. And it worked fine for me. Obviously that's not the most stable thing to do, but you can imagine having tape here, put it against the wall and then just set this on top of it. There's some different ways you could do this to make it more secure. You could have a cleat, you could have a screw, uh, some different options, but that worked well for me and I'll show you all how that turned out here in a second. But that's the five tips and now I'll quickly assemble everything and show you how it looks. As far as assembly goes, it's fairly straightforward. You essentially just place everything together uh, as I'm showing here. And then for the LED light, it's important to start uh, with the end of the light uh, at, the at the base and then kind of wrap it all the way around. And then most of these, there's places that you can cut uh, the light at certain intervals. And just make sure that you cut it uh, wherever you think that it looks best. And I would recommend actually like overlapping the lights a little bit because if you don't, there might be a little gap uh, in the lighting it's a little bit distracting. So I would prefer, uh, generally speaking, if they overlap some rather than have a little missing gap just based on how the segments line up. So that's another tip. If you're cutting your light, I would just try to do it that way so that it looks nice and uniform. All right, so that's about it. Now all you have to do is find some double-sided tape, put it on the back of the hanger, put the hanger up on the wall, make sure it's nice and level, and then put your sign on top of the hanger. And if you made it this far in the video, hopefully uh, you got something out of it, and I'd recommend checking out my uh, custom luggage tag video. It's pretty similar, and you can make your own luggage tags. Thanks for watching.